So you've purchased Steel Division 2 and now you're sitting on the main menu wondering what to do next. Well this tutorial is going to take you through everything you need to know to get started in Steel Division 2. Welcome to Steel Division 2. In this video I'm just going to be going through the menus quickly and showing you guys how to get started in Steel Division 2. So let's just get straight into it. First of all we have the solo menu. This is where your single player is. Uh, you have Skirmish where you can play against AI. You've got all your settings here including Battlefield which is all of your maps. There's currently 39 maps in the game, 27 unique maps. Really, really awesome indeed. Definitely worth checking out the skirmish mode here. You can add and remove as many different AI as you want to set it up exactly as you please. But one thing you might find if you just jump into Steel Division and go straight into skirmish is that you don't have any battle groups to choose from. Now this can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, you can, however, if you don't want to mess around with the battle groups just yet, select random axis battle group or random allied battle group, and that will give you a completely random battle group that's put together by the game. Now that's not necessarily the most optimal thing to do, um, but I'll show you guys the battle group options soon. And when you do have battle groups, um, you can jump into the game and use them. So anyway, that's just skirmish for now. You also have the option of historical battles. In these, you just select them, uh, you go in and you choose which division you want to play as. All of the divisions and decks are set up and ready to go in this game mode. So you can click view deck and this will bring the battle group up that you'll be playing with. It shows you all of the units that you'll have at your disposal uh, during the game. It will also show you your income. Now this income here, the 60, 115, 125, you'll see that quite a lot. What that is, is phase income. So how much, how many points you get per minute in phase A, B and C. Phase A and B last for 10 minutes. Uh, one after the other, and then phase C continues for the rest of the game from the 20 minute mark. So that's what those numbers mean, just as a brief overview. The other things that you have here in the single player options are Army General. This is your campaigns. So there are currently four campaigns in Steel Division 2. Uh, they can be played on both the Axis and Soviet sides. So feel free to mess around with that. I will be bringing you guys a specific campaign tutorial in a separate video so make sure to look out for that then you have the load option where you can find all of your saves that you can make throughout the different single player modes also in single player one thing to note it's a great tool for practicing especially before going into multiplayer so the reason for that is if you are playing a game against ai you can speed up or slow down the game at your own will. So you can literally have it at half speed, giving you much more time to make all the little orders that you might want to usually do if you can't quite keep up with the game yet. So that is fantastic practice for multiplayer and I would definitely uh, recommend it to go into skirmish first of all. And that includes for the campaign actually. Uh, practicing in skirmish will also help you in the campaign. So after that we have the multiplayer. Now in here we have custom game lobbies where you can create your own lobby, where you can invite your friends. All your friends in this game are on your friends uh, Steam list. So if you want to add someone to the game, make sure they're on your Steam friend list that is. Um, and then you can make it public, just have random people join. You can set up the settings just like you can in Skirmish. Now, there's actually three game modes that I haven't mentioned in uh, the game. Uh, you've got Conquest, Eastern Front, Conquest, Closer Combat, and Breakthrough. Uh, what these are, basically Conquest is capture the flag on a massive scale. Um, well, not quite capture the flag, it's more like domination if you think about like Call of Duty game modes. or It's like Conquest if you think about um, Battlefield. So that's kind of how it works. You've got to capture as many flags as you can on the map and whoever holds more basically bleeds tickets from the other players or the other team. That's how the game mode works. Uh, the difference between Eastern Front and Closed Combat is just the deployment zones are much closer to one another. The deployment zones are where you place your units at the start of the game uh, before you start. Um, and then in Breakthrough, um, it's a attack defense game mode where the 
defenders deploy defenses as well as their units and then the attackers have to try and break that down in order to take as many flags as they can and if they take over half of the flags on the map then they will start to win the game and very quickly so yeah that's what breakthrough mode is so that's just a quick look at the different modes uh, you can have as many or as little slots as you want there are plenty of different map sizes based on this like blue block here uh, the thinner ones are 1v1 it actually changes the amount of slots for you if you select the map so 1v1 2v2 3v3 4v4 that's for the same map there la nina um like i said there's 39 maps in total but 27 of them are unique so bear that in mind very cool indeed so that's the custom game lobby if you don't want to set up a lobby feel free to jump into quick play uh this will set you up against a random opponent it's only 1v1 at the moment i believe uh, but you basically just choose your deck on either allied or axis side and then click launch and it will put you into a queue to find yourself an opponent i would recommend custom game for the most part because quick play the queues can vary based on peak times and same deal with ranked except from you just get ranked and you get wins and losses and you'll get put on the leaderboard uh, if you play ranked so that's that that's multiplayer Next up, battle groups. So battle groups, you have the divisions menu. This is where you can select which division you'd like to build. And for example, let's just say the second guard's tank core, you just select it and then you click select at the bottom. It will jump you into this screen, which probably looks super complicated. Uh, but I do plan to do another separate tutorial to cover how to make a battle group and what to consider when making a battle group and so on. You have your deployment types at the top. This is what I was talking about earlier with like the phase A, phase B, phase C income. You can choose how much income you get in each phase based on how you want to build the battle group. That's just an overview though. And if you click on one of these squares, for example, you'll get introduced to all the different units that you can select for this specific division in this battle group. Um, again, it might sound very complex, but uh, give it time and you'll definitely get your head around it and hopefully be able to make yourself a battle group in no time. Definitely worth jumping in anyway and uh, sort of mess around with it you know it doesn't have to be perfect first time round play it against ai for example and then the next thing you have on the list is battle groups these are all of the battle groups that i currently have made or have in the game so these are all my custom made battle groups and Again, might look a bit complicated. You're probably wondering why did you take this in phase A or phase B? These uh, cards, uh, the top left number is how many points of the income you have to spend in order to bring them in. Uh, the un Underneath, that's the number of units you get on that card. So you'll have six separately in that game. Um, the letter there is which phase you can bring them in. Uh, phase A cards you can bring in for the first 10 minutes phase b cards you can bring in for the first 20 minutes and well after after 10 minutes um, you can bring in phase b cards and then after 20 minutes you can bring in phase c cards uh, but it doesn't like lock out the earlier cards so basically if you're in phase c you can bring in phase a b and c cards for example so just bear that in mind uh, now if you would like to have copies of my divisions to get you started i will leave a google document in the description that you can use in order to copy and paste all of my divisions into the game and in order to do that what you do is you just copy the code and you click import it will automatically paste it in the deck code box and then you just type in the name uh, you want to give to that battle group uh, i normally try and match it with the division uh, or give it an english variant name for example so this is the 44th guards rifles in english so i just have it as that as my battle group name so i understand which division it is if i'm looking at it in the list um, you can export your divisions as well if you make your own and want to share them with your friends um, you can copy and paste them and then so so if you want to import mine but you don't necessarily want to have mine exactly the same just copy it and then make your own variant of it and then compare it to mine for example something like that delete rename edit etc pretty self-explanatory at the bottom there then you have the armory this is probably one of the coolest places in still division 2 it's absolutely full of war porn if you love looking at world war 2 equipment this is the best place to be there is like 900 units in the armory if i scroll down you will see them all it is incredible there's so much stuff here 
and you can see at the top you have all the different nations and yes that is Hungary if you are wondering so Hungary is represented in the game and you also have uh, Britain, US, Canada and French these are all part of the Back to War DLC and if you own Steel Division normally 44 you will automatically own these in this game it's kind of like a loyalty reward I guess and you can also purchase them if you haven't already got Steel Division normally 44. So you can go through all the different variants of units. So you can lock out or have all of the different units for each variant. But I would say the best way to look through the units in the armory is select a nation and then go through recon, infantry, tank support. And that I think that's probably what makes the most sense. You can also filter them by whatever type of unit you want. So if you only want to see tank destroyers of the Germans, then there you go. Uh, you might notice this thing on the right hand side of the Jagdpanzer 38T here for example, those are camouflages, so different sort of cosmetics I guess, and I think you unlock them with the deluxe version of the game. Um, there's also filter by name, you can like type in Jagd for example, and that will show you all of the units with Jagd in the name for example. Um, you can set it to allies and axis only. There's a lot of different ways that you can go through the armory and explore all the different units that the Steel Division 2 has to offer. So that's that. So that's the first three options. And you're probably thinking, wow, this is already like so much information. Uh, but feel free to go back and like watch it again if it's a bit overwhelming. Um, I will be doing like individual tutorials for like looking through the armory, um, just going back into that. I'll be going through what all of the different statistics mean and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be doing like an armory tutorial. I'll be doing a battle group tutorial. I'll be doing a campaign tutorial. I'll be doing a gameplay tutorial. You know, they're all going to come afterwards. So if you want to check that out, um, they will be available soon. If not already, if you're watching this later down the line. Under profile, you just have your friends list, which again is basically your friends on Steam. Um, then you have your stats where you can see your level, uh, your rank, how many wins and losses you have. My victory ratio is currently 50-50 apparently. And in skirmish, it's probably, yeah, more defeats than wins because I tend to just mess around against the AI. And you can see I've played against <laughs> lots of medium AI just uh, for fun. And I haven't really uh, played through the campaign much just yet. Uh, you have your um, replays here as well. This is where you can see all your different replays. Um, every single game you play um, is automatically saved as a replay unless you turn it off in the options and you can change your nickname as well if you like. Now the options, this is something that might take a little bit longer to go through but it's definitely worth mentioning. Sticky selection means uh, when you select a unit and give it an order it doesn't like unselect so I like to keep sticky selection on. Um, Sticky selection is off by default, I think, for strategic campaigns. Automatic fire on enemy supplies is off by default. That just means that like when a supply vehicle is nearby, I mean, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory as it is, um, but you'll have to manually right-click in order to attack an enemy supply vehicle. Automatic Winchester evac, you probably want that on if you're a newbie um, because planes, after they use their payload, like drop their bombs, will automatically fly off the field and reload, which is good. But in certain situations, in certain aircraft, you don't want that to happen if you're playing at a higher level. So this allows you to stop them from automatically flying away if they use their rockets, for example, on an IL-2, but you still want to use the aircraft to strafe as well. Um, that's like what automatic Winchester evac is for. Um, mouse trap just keeps your mouse in the window. Uh, mouse border scroll. I would recommend using WSD to move your camera rather than moving your mouse to the edge of the screen like in traditional RTSs. Um, pad camera control, I'm not even sure what that is. Um, language is obviously self-explanatory and so is all this, except from the bottom part. Now, minimum accuracy to fire while holding fire and minimum penetration to fire while holding fire is to do with the efficient shot command in game. Uh, if you, This is based on the percentage of penetration and accuracy that you want to do. Currently, it's I think at default it's like 40%, uh, but if you move it more to the left it goes to zero, and if you go to the right it goes to like 100%. So if you want your AT guns to wait until they have 100% penetration to fire while using efficient shot, then you can just whack that all the way up, and they will do that if you click the efficient shot option during the game. Under interface, um, this is pretty self-explanatory for the most part. I would say for unit scaling, I used to have it on none because I like it being realistic, but honestly, Keeping it up 
is probably better for newer players because it allows you to see how the units are working in the game. So for example, with a tank, it will allow you to notice which way a unit is facing. And that's quite important, especially going up against other tanks or AT guns. You want your tank to be showing its front armor because the most armor is on the front. And um, therefore, if it's large unit scaling, you will see that tank much clearer on the map from a distance. Um, rather than having to zoom in to see uh, which way the tank is facing. Um, I would recommend uh, keeping the uh, requisition menu open for the most part so that you can just continuously click down all the units you need. Um, and by the way, tactic and strategic, strategics for the campaign and tactics like when you're actually in battle. So there's that. Uh, I generally keep things on RTS icon types unless you're familiar with the NATO uh, designations. Um, label aggregation is by default on. This is actually quite a, a, an important one. Um, if you are new, you might want to keep it on. But if you are, get more familiar with the game, turn it off because it then allows you to individually micro your units a lot easier when label aggregation is off. But for newer players, um, when you want to like use four T-34s or something all at once, uh, keeping it on is a lot easier to do that. Um, and then the rest, I think, is just personal preference. Then over to controls, these are all of your keys. Uh, probably worth taking a note of most of these and, and what they do. You can also, when you're in-game, hover over the commands in the bottom right in order to see the hotkey for that command. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and do that. Um, under audio, that's again pretty self-explanatory and set your video settings as is. These are my video settings for if you're wondering. I have an i7 8700K and a GTX 1080. So that's my settings. I pretty much have it on maximum settings. Um, I would also recommend giving auto settings a go and then adjusting uh, after that. That's probably the best way to do it. The credits are also in the options as well. And uh, there you go. Mod Center, not available yet, but hopefully in the future there will be mods available. And uh, then you have the privacy policy. And that is it. That should give you a little bit of an overview of the menus and how to find certain things in the game. So what would I recommend do to do to start? Well, first things first, get yourself some battle groups. So the best way to do this Again, go to my Google Doc in the description, copy and paste codes, import them into the game and have a look at them. You know, open them up, explore them. Think, oh, um, look at all these options and oh, look at all the, the cards he's chosen. And then look at the deployment type and try and work out how the thing's supposed to be used. I, I, I say that in a very general sense. Again, I'll be in more detail when I go into like how to make a battle group and so on. And when I do gameplay mechanics videos. But that's certainly something that you want to check up on. And then if you've picked one you like the look of, go into solo, jump into skirmish and play against even a very easy AI, right? That would be the first thing to do. And say even if you lose against a very easy AI, don't feel bad. I would say the best thing to do then is come out, go into replays and watch what the AI did. See why you lost. Look at like the, the reasons you lost. And that should give you a better idea on how to avoid that loss in the future. And just go through that process. The replays are really good to watch. And they're really like, it gives you a good opportunity to pause it and zoom right in and see all the gorgeous graphics in this game. So I would say that's a good cycle to get you started. And then when you start to feel more comfortable, put the, the difficulty up to medium, hard even, whatever. And then start looking into the historical battles, the campaign maybe jump into multiplayer. Um, and in terms of resources, well, other than the Google Doc, I would say I would recommend joining my Discord. There's also the Steel Division uh, League Discord and the Steel Division 2 official Discord uh, that are all worth joining. I'll make sure to leave links to all of those in the description as well. And you can find people who will help you out uh, with the game and answer as many questions as possible. Also, if you have your own questions, make sure to uh, leave them in the comments. I'm sure there will be many people who are willing to answer them. And I will also go through them if I get the chance. So that is about it. Um, 
don't be scared to just dive straight in. Select these units and see what's going on uh, with the, the armory and so on. And just, yeah, experiment. I, I would say don't be scared to experiment. This game will beat you down and it will be difficult to get into. But I tell you now, Steel Division 2 and all of the games like War Games and Steel Division Normally 44 are some of the most rewarding games to learn. So hopefully that's uh, been helpful. Hopefully that's uh, going to get you started in Steel Division 2. In the future, I will be hitting the more specific things like basic gameplay mechanics, understanding the armory, how to build your own battle group, and advanced gameplay mechanics. Look forward to those videos, but until next time, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.